folks, Rick Waddell here. I'm the Chief Investment Officer at RFG Advisory. Uh, thought we would reach out to you today with a brief market update, uh, kind of let you know what's going on out there, which is pretty much great news across the board. Um, S&P 500 right now is at 45.47, uh, so right around that 45.50 level, uh, which is about 5% below its all-time high. Uh, market seeing kind of a very impressive rally throughout the month of November, up about eight and a half percent from in during November. Um, and really, if you think about when this rally started, which was right before Halloween on October 27th, we're up about 10 and a half percent on the S&P 500 in that period of time. So um, a pretty well, a pretty ginormous rally over the span of about four weeks. Um, and all of that has been fueled by a reduction in uh, long-term interest rates. So 10-year Treasury um, yields dropping almost 70 basis points or seven-tenths of 1%. Uh, when we started this rally, uh, the 10-year Treasury was yielding about 5%. Everybody was very freaked out. Um, those yields have dropped uh, to about 4.3%, 4.33 at the last reading. Um, and this is all fueled by this speculation that the economy has turned um, and that we are finally now winning the fight against inflation. Uh, interest rates for this cycle, at least, uh, and this is the narrative once again, uh, but the narrative would be that interest rates have peaked, um, that the Fed is done raising rates, that inflation appears to be cooling, uh, and that uh, as a result, we could be seeing interest rate cuts as soon as kind of mid next year. Some models show even as early as May of next year, um, we'd start to see the kind of Goldilocks cut, as it's called. Uh, once again, Goldilocks referring to that sort of happy middle of uh, the soft landing. The economy is not too hot. The economy is not too cold. Um, I would just note that, uh, you know, the data uh, continues to look good for that narrative. So we got jobless claims, initial jobless claims and continuing jobless claims out today. Um, both of those indicate a kind of weakening labor market without being too terribly weak. Uh, so about 218,000 jobless claims up slightly about 7,000 month over month. Um, continuing claims went up by about 80,000. So once again, indicating a cooling job job market, but not a frozen job market. Um, and then perhaps more importantly, um, core inflation in core consumption items as measured by what's known as the PCE or the personal consumption expenditures uh, report. Um, that cooled from 0.3% month over month last month to 0.2% month over month this month. Um, core PCE is one of the Fed measures that the Fed likes to track to track global, you know, sort of core inflation. Uh, one of their preferred measures. Um, and just so to see that cooling down back to that 0.2% range, we've talked about before, you kind of need to be between 0.1 and 0.2 for the Fed to feel good. Um, we are certainly at the top end of that range, but in the range. Uh, so that's, that's very good. Um, and once again, that's what is driving this continued narrative of inflation cooling. So maybe the Fed doesn't need to hike rates anymore is really driving those lower interest rates. Um, the beautiful thing um, if you own sort of a balanced portfolio or a portfolio that has, you know, long dated bond exposure in it is that as we see interest rates drop, uh, we then see higher bond prices on the other side. We've talked about that math before. Interest rates go down, bond prices go up. Um, the Barclays Ag, which is probably the most well-recognized index, uh, bond index out there, is up 4.3% in November, uh, up 5% since October 27th. Um, so we have that magical kind of, uh, you know, uh, opposite of what happened back Back in 2022, um, we have both equities and bonds uh, moving in the same direction. Uh, and in this case, it's up. So if you own both of those things, uh, you will probably be happy when you open your November statement. Last but not least, just two points that I would make on this. Um, first is, I think the month of November and really the last you know 30 to 35 days really, really highlight very, very well the dangers of trying to time the market. 
um, you know, uh, market rallies when the economy starts to reach inflection points uh, can be very volatile, uh, can be very violent uh, in either direction. Um, and, you know, certainly hope nobody was sitting on the sidelines uh, for the month of November because that was a very painful time to be on the sidelines. Um, second thing that I would just say is, uh, and, you know, not to throw cold water on the wonderful story of November, uh, but the second thing that I would just say is we do need to be aware of the second derivative here. Um, as markets rally and as long-term interest rates go down, those things are both stimulative uh, to the economy because people feel better about their savings accounts. People feel better about their investment accounts uh, and borrowing costs get cheaper. Uh, and so we'll just have to see um, is inflation really dead or does this most recent round of, you know, taking the brakes off the economy, at least on the long term of the interest rate picture, um, does that become stimulative here in the next month or two or three? Uh, you know, we'll just have to see. Uh, nobody really knows. With that, uh, you know, just uh, let everybody know that if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to myself or to your advisor. Um, I hope you're having a great week and I look forward to talking to you again soon.